Yeah, I know. Mike. Thank you so much. <laughs> What's a parade without a little kofafo? thing we're going to do is is lay the wreath so if everybody could um whoever's participating in that part go to the um front of the monument please I'd like to invite Vicki up to sing the national anthem. Oh, 
morning and welcome. On behalf of the Town of Plymouth and Veterans Services, welcome to our Memorial Day ceremony. At this time, I'd like to invite Phil Ryan, the Chaplain of the Legion, to deliver the opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come humbly before thee, asking thy blessings on this ceremony. Certainly, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank you, Phil. At this time, I would like um, to make a special presentation to our um, Royal Canadian Legion. Um, I'd like to welcome each and every one of them, but I'd like to ask Ray Clark to come up here with me, please. But please welcome Nellie and Dick Sharinga. Dave McNally, Donna Reynolds, Sherry Ayers, Fred Harrison, and Lynn LaFleur. And we are missing the ones that couldn't make the trip this time. It is my honor to be able to read uh, the inscription on this plaque of appreciation to our friends from Canada, uh, the Royal Canadian Legion which will then be presented by a Director of Veterans Affairs, Roxanne Whitbeck. In appreciation for your continued support, and dedication to our veterans and to the Plymouth, Massachusetts community, we recognize the friendship and alliance with the Royal Canadian Legion. For more than 40 years, we have gathered together to honor all who have served our nation. It is with pleasure that this plaque is presented to you as a symbol of our joint commitment in expressing gratitude for the many freedoms we enjoy. Presented on behalf of all veterans this 30th day of May 2022, Director Roxanne Whitbeck. And now if we can just take a moment of silence for all the young lives that were lost in um, the tragedy in Texas. Thank you and God bless. Right now we'd like to read um, the list of all the fallen veterans that we've lost since last Memorial Day. I'd like to invite Phil Ryan and Dennis. Oh, oh Ray, yes. So sorry. Ray? I'm sorry. I wanted Ray to say a few words to you guys and it kind of glazed right over that. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> sorry, <Ann. laughs> That's okay. No problem. We usually get forgotten anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 1979, four members of the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 120 in Georgetown, Ontario, decided that they were going to go fishing, and they were going to go to Cape Cod. Well, of course, being Legion members, they had to find a place where they could refresh themselves, just a drink of water now and again. And so they found American Legion Post 40. In speaking to the commander and to the members there at the Legion, it was suggested that the next time they come down, if they're going fishing, to bring down their uniforms and they could maybe march in your Memorial Day parade. So the next year they came down and they had their uniforms. They brought the colors with them as well. The following year, a group of about 26 people came down or came to Plymouth. That year, we invited American Legion Post 40 to our Veterans Day parade in, at the CNE grounds in Toronto, Ontario. And for the last 40 plus years, in May, we come here to be with you our second family. And in August, 
American Legion Post 40 will come over and see us in Toronto and march in our Warriors Day Parade. The parade this year will be the 100th anniversary of the parade. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that your American Legion Post 40 can lead that parade in Toronto. It's fabulous to have a family, a second family, like you guys in Plymouth. We love coming here. It's been fabulous for these 40 plus years. And I hope it continues for a long time in the future. Comrades, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for accepting us into your community. Thank you. I would never forget you. Thank you, Ray. That was wonderful. Thank you, Ray. And definitely no, no slight intended whatsoever. Me and my scrambled notes, that's a problem. At this time, I'd like to take a few moments to um, read the names of the fallen veterans that we've lost since uh, last Memorial Day. There's about 212 of them. The first one, Sherman Acorn, Korea. You guys, you going to ding between the twin? Willa, William... Adminsky, Korea. Aiden Ambrose, Peacetime. Carl Amin, Korea. Walford Anderson, Jr., Vietnam. Louis Barlow, Peacetime. John Barrett, Korea. Bernard Barfaldi, Peacetime. Edwin Barnaducek, Lebanon. Donald Bentley, Korea. Peter Bertazzi, Vietnam. Robert Bickford, Vietnam. Wayne Black, Vietnam. Nicholas Borges, Vietnam. Salvatore Bonanno, World War II. Gerald Bossy, Vietnam. Alfred Bouchard, Vietnam. Burton Beaudry, Peacetime. Ronald Bowen, Korea. Patrick Bowes, Vietnam. Eamon Brady, Vietnam. Tim Brady, Vietnam. Paul Buckley, Peacetime. Charles Burke, Vietnam. Ed Burkame, Vietnam. John Burns, Vietnam. Frederick Caldwell, Vietnam. Thomas Callahan, Vietnam. Arthur Cameron, Vietnam. Douglas Cannon, Vietnam. Louis Capella, Vietnam. Tina Carroll, Vietnam. William Carter, Korea. Carmine Cassiano, Vietnam. Stephen Cass, Vietnam. Gerald Cassidy, Vietnam. Michael Co Cochran, Vietnam. Romeo Kalala, Korea. Francis Collins, Vietnam. Wayne Cordero, Vietnam. Robert Corsica, Vietnam. Richard Cotton, World War II. Richard Coosley, Peacetime. Robert Craffey, Korea. Leon Ceremonelli, Peacetime. Philip Curtis, Vietnam. James Daly, Vietnam. Alfred Daniel, Peacetime. Arthur Darcy, Vietnam. Thomas Dern, Peacetime. William Degrassi, World War II. George DeLore, Vietnam. David Delroy, Korea. John Donahue, Korea. James Donovan, Vietnam. Robert Dun excuse me. Dunkman, Vietnam. Mark Dane, Vietnam. James Dunn, World War II. Edward Evans, Vietnam. Dennis Fashini, Korea. Frank Faziano, Vietnam. Jack Fernandez, Vietnam. Henry Finn, Vietnam. Joseph Fisher, Vietnam. John Flurry, Peacetime. Andrew Flynn, Vietnam. And Stephen Foley, World War II. Dennis, Dennis, you're next. I'd ask our chime ringers to come out front. Uh, Robbie and 
Eric, would you please uh, stand up front here, please? Uh, from Plymouth North High School, I'm going to ask you to move to the right and to the left there. There you go. Thank you. Continuing with our honor roll of those veterans who have deceased uh, since last May in Plymouth, I will continue. Donald Foster, Korea, William Francis, Vietnam, James Freeman, Vietnam, Christopher Galvin, Vietnam, Joe Gilda, Korea, Ronald Goodick, Korea, Edward Grant, Vietnam, Michael Green, Peacetime, William Gregory, World War II, Francis Grissom, Griffin, Peacetime, William Gundal, Vietnam, Patrick Hale, Vietnam, George Haley, the second, Vietnam, William Halligan, Vietnam, Larry Haitian, Vietnam, William Hayes, World War II, James Hemphill, Vietnam, John Herbley, Vietnam, Thomas Hickley, Vietnam, James Hiltz, Korea, Michael Hogan, Vietnam, William Hobart, Vietnam, Richard Horton, Vietnam, Kenneth Howe, Vietnam and Korea, Richard Hoyt, Vietnam, Donald Agor, Vietnam, Korea, Eugene Irvin, Jr., Lebanon, Ernest Johnson, Vietnam, Richard Kane, Peacetime, William Keefe, Jr., Korea, Joseph Kennedy, Vietnam, Patrick Kennedy, Iraq, John Kettier, Peacetime, Charles Kesselman, Vietnam, Paul King, Vietnam, Howard Kingsford, Vietnam, Richard Knox, Vietnam, Herlett Cramp, World War II, General Kriegel, Peacetime, Clarence Kylander, Vietnam, William Lightyear, Vietnam, Squally Lazala, World War II, George Lavinge, Vietnam, Robert Leahy, Vietnam, Robert Leonard, Gulf War, Leonard Leroy, Peacetime, Raymond Little Jr., World War II, Richard Litchfield, Korea, David Listrom, Vietnam, Dale Lola, Peacetime, Thomas Long, Vietnam, Robert Losser, Vietnam, Daniel McPhee, Peacetime, Charles McGaw, Peacetime, Romulid McGreta, Peacetime, Owen Malaguti, Korea, Michael Martin, Vietnam, Theodore Matthews, Korea, Philip Mazzola, Korea, James McCollum, Vietnam, Russell McGilvery, Vietnam, Joseph McGinnis, World War II, John McNamara, Vietnam, Richard Mello, Vietnam, Korea, John Miller, Korea, Edward Michelano, Peacetime, Robert Modal, Vietnam, Francis Merlino, Korea, and Richard Mosley, Vietnam. I'll ask Chaplain Phil to continue. Charles Moulton II, Korea. Arthur Mullen, Vietnam. Thomas Murphy, Peacetime. William Murphy, Jr., Iraq. Bruce Meyer, Vietnam. John Nardone, Vietnam. Gordon Neal, World War II. Rudolph Nelson, Vietnam. Nelson Norquist, Korea. Edward Norton, Vietnam. Royal Odell, Korea. Kevin O'Farrell, Vietnam. Lawrence O'Neill, Vietnam. Pamela Paul, Peacetime. Adelbert Peckman, Vietnam. Edward Pepin, Vietnam. John Phyllis, Korea. Joseph Patera, Vietnam. Willard Plumley, Vietnam. Robert Predmore, Vietnam. John Preston Jr., Korea. Robert Raps, Vietnam. Barry Resnick, Korea. Robert Richmond, World War II. Francis Ridge, Jr., Vietnam. David Ripley, Peacetime. Robert Risner, Vietnam. David Rodman, World War II. Wallace Ruads, Vietnam, Korea. James Ruggieri, Vietnam. James Ryan, World War II. Victor Salomon, Vietnam. Carl Saunders, Vietnam. Vincent Scafidi, World War II. Neil Scanlon, Gulf War. 
Craig Sherman, Vietnam. Laszlo Schmidt, Korea. Francis Schillen, World War II. Gilbert Silva, with Vietnam. Lawrence Smith, Vietnam. Ian Smith, Peacetime. James Smith, Jr., World War II. Anthony Spinoza, World War II. Henry St. Laurent, Peacetime. Fred Stockwell, Peacetime. Harry Sturgis, Korea. Albert Supple, Korea. Kenneth Taba, Vietnam. Louis Tarantino, World War II. Michael Tracano, Peacetime. Wayne Terrell, World War II. James Thomas, Korea. Stephen Thomas, Peacetime. Arthur Trolley, Truani, Peacetime. Robert Trogan, Peacetime. Bruce Alvilla, Vietnam. Frank Van Gordon, Vietnam, Korea. Robert Villano, Vietnam. John Locus, Korea. Harvey Walker, Vietnam. Catherine Walton, Iraq. John Witherby, Peacetime. Thomas Webby, Korea. Michael Weber, Gulf War. Terence Westgate, Gulf War. Mary Wheeler, Lebanon. Richard Wilson, Korea. John Young, Vietnam. Daniel Youngman, Korea. Stanislaw Zalewski, Vietnam. And Ronald Zawalski, Vietnam. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite the Plymouth Band under the direction of Bonnie Holmes to do the salute to the services.
time I would like to invite Patricia Sherman and Sky Sherman up to the mic. Um, Patricia is the surviving spouse of Ben Sherman who was killed, killed in action. She's going to tell you a little bit about Ben. Hello, my name is Patricia Sherman. Beside me is my 12-year-old daughter, Skyla. We are one of the many Gold Star families that reside here in Plymouth. My husband, Sergeant Benjamin Sherman, went missing in action November 4th, 2009, on a resupply mission while deployed in Afghanistan. A few short days later, November 12th, he was pronounced dead as killed in action. Ben grew up in Plymouth. He was a proud graduate of Plymouth South High School. After graduation, he immediately left for basic training where he learned discipline, values, teamwork, and what it took to be a soldier. Many remember Ben as a rebellious teenager. If he heard the word no, that just made him want to do it more. The Army changed his life and mine. It helped shape him into the man he wanted to become it gave him clarity and a mission to protect his comrades. It also helped him realize that I was the woman that he wanted to marry. Luckily for him, I said yes. The 82nd Airborne Division was his home. It was his meaning of a life to protect and serve at all costs. His cost was his life, which left a footprint on the world. Today we honor those who have fallen protecting us keeping guard so we remain safe to our lives. Today, my mother and I shed tears for the courageous man in our life that was taken too soon, but who we couldn't be more proud of. I may have never been able to meet my father, but I am proud of him. Today, comrades around the world take a knee for their fallen brothers and sisters. Today, I ask you to keep these heroes in your heart every day as we do. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Air Force veteran Michelle L. Green to speak about her service. Good morning, everyone. I'm retired Tech Sergeant Michelle Alegria of the Air Force. I am very humbled and honored to speak about the branch that I proudly served for over 20 years. For over a century, air, space, and cyberspace have been defended by our brave Americans. Originally created in 1907 as a part of the US Army, the Air Force was established as a separate branch with the passing of the National Security Act in 1947, signed by President Harry Truman. The Air Force was established, or excuse me, the Air Force flag has been established in 1951. Her colors, are ultramarine blue and yellow. The stars around the bald eagle represent the original 13 colonies. The three stars above the eagle symbolizes the three departments of defense, the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The bald eagle itself is, a, is common to the United States, representing power, nobility, and strength. The cloud behind the eagle represents the creation of a new firmament. The thunderbolts on the crest are symbolic to the air power of the US military. They are also a powerful reminder of the explosive forces of nature that the Air Force must contend with daily. In honor of Military Appreciation Month, I would like to appreciate two sisters. Sylvia Rodriguez Petrowski and Rosemary Rodriguez Lambert. They have served over 32 years combined in the US Army. These women have made a profound impact on my life and continue to do so today. They have taught me how powerful women can be in and out of the military. They taught me strength, compassion, and set a positive example of what a woman I wanna be. They stood by my side, supporting me in everything that I have done in my life and my career. 
Without them, I wouldn't be standing here today saying these words. We military always talk about how important it is to have the support of your family. I have the rare ability to be able to say that the women in my family are also my fellow comrades. For that, I say thank you, and I love you, Mommy and Aunt Roro. And now I'd like to speak about my service, the U.S. Navy. The U.S. Navy was founded in October 13, 1775, and the Department of the Navy was established on April 30, 1798. Navy operating forces, as of 2019, the Navy has more than 300,032 active duty members and nearly 100,000 100, members in the reserve. Some interesting facts about the Navy. Um, Beverly Mass claimed the right to be the Navy's birthplace. Navy ships are named for individuals, are christened by the eldest living female descendant of that individual. During World War II, the Navy produced six future presidents, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, and Bush Sr. The Blue Angels, the Navy has um, the, Navy has the um, exhibition team, and they were, they were established in 1946. Um, as a 13-year veteran myself, having served at RTC Orlando, Commander Naval Forces Marianas Islands, and the, the MEPS in Boston, and then finally at NAS South Weymouth. My son is currently serving. He has been serving for eight years. He's a medic, and he's done several deployments. He is currently in Submariner School down in Connecticut, and he's expecting the first Navy baby next month. Now, if we could um, welcome the U.S. Uh, Tony Cassiano to speak about his dad, uh, U.S. Marine Tony Cassiano. Cassiano thank you. Thank you, Roxanne, and, and thank you, Dennis. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to all the veterans that are here with us today um, for your service and to your loved ones who have also sacrificed along the way. Thank you. So a few words uh, about my father, uh, better known by his fellow Marines, uh, friends, and family as Captain Cash. Ronald Reagan once said, some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they've made a difference in this world. Marines don't have that problem. <laughs> and my dad was no exception. In fact, by the age of 25, he had already earned 32 air medals, two distinguished flying crosses, a purple heart, and had flown over 600 missions in Vietnam. By the way, he flew those 600 missions in eight months. Many of those missions were into direct enemy fire to rescue his wounded brothers and Marines. Sadly, his last mission ended up in my father needing to be rescued. His time in Vietnam was done. His time fighting, however, was not. More importantly, his time creating a positive impact in this world also wasn't over. And with the love and support of his wife and my mom, fought through the rehab, the medical procedures, three months on a feeding tube, and fought his way like good Marines do to build an incredible life, not just for himself, but for his family. Today, there are 14 grandchildren, one great-grandchild, all of us carrying in our daily lives memories of my father. Sadly, about a year ago, as it turns out, while he left Vietnam, Vietnam never really left him. And he passed due to exposure to Agent Orange that he encountered when he was in country all those years ago. But beyond death, you see his presence everywhere. In a family gathering with a story and everybody smiles. Those grandkids living out their lives, building careers, building families of their own, and an image of the example that my father set. And it should be no surprise, because as they say, once a Marine, always a Marine. 
should be no surprise that even after death, he continues to make a positive impact on this world. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And certainly, last but not least, the U.S. Coast Guard, Deanna Melby, Chief Warrant Officer 4. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out this Memorial Day. I am uh, Deanna Melby. Chief Warrant Officer 4, after uh, 29 years, I uh, recently retired. The Coast Guard is one of the largest organizations of the federal government, established in 1790. The Coast Guard served as the nation's only armed force on the seas until Congress launched the Navy Department eight years later. Since then, the Coast Guard has protected the United States throughout its long history and served proudly in every one of the nation's conflicts since the Quasi War of 1789 to present. The Coast Guard is a principal federal agency responsible for maritime safety, security, and environmental stewardship in the United States, uh, portways, and waterways. In this capacity, the Coast Guard protects and defends more than 100,000 miles of U.S. coastal and inland waterways and safeguards the exclusive economic zone, which encompass 4.5 million square miles stretching from the north of the Arctic Circle to the south of the equator, from Puerto Rico to Guam, encompassing nine time zones, the largest EEZ in the world, as one of the six armed forces of the United States, the Coast Guard is the only military service within the Department of Homeland Security. The Coast Guard role as an armed service is the, and is a first responder and maritime service that provides aids to people in distress or impacts by natural and man-made disasters, whether at sea or ashore. Coast Guard was the only service that stuck around for Katrina while all the other services and first responders departed New, New Orleans. Coast Guard is a member of the intelligent communi community and is a law enforcement and regulatory agency with a broad legal authorities that associate with the maritime transportation, hazardous materials, shipping, bridges, administrations, oil spill response, which I did serve in 2010 at the Deep Land or Deep Water Horizon in Homa, Louisiana. Coast Guard has over 56,000 members, active duty and reserve, and operates in a multi mission interoperable fleet of 243 cutters, ships, 201 fixed and rotary aircraft, and over 16 hundred boats. Operational control and surface and air assets is vested in the Coast Guard in two uh, regional geographic areas from Pacific and Atlantic. On average, the Coast Guard conducts 45 search and rescue missions, saves 10 lives, saves over 1.2 million dollars in property, seizes 874 pounds of cocaine and 214 pounds of marijuana, conducts 57 waterborne patrols and criminal maritime infrastructure, interdicts 17 illegal immigrants, escorts five high capacity vessels, passenger vessels, conducts 24 security boardings in and around U.S. ports, screens 360 merchant vessels for potential security threats prior to the arrival of U.S. ports. That's in one day, times that by 364 days. Uh, we also conduct 14 fishery uh, conservative boardings, such as uh, maritime law enforcement and environmental protection, fixing uh, the 200 
aids to navigations, investigates maritime pollution incidences, and I could go on. As a multi-mission, we have the most missions of all the military services, uh, 11, and there is 43,000 active duty Coast Guard members nationwide doing these missions, from port and waterway security, drug interdiction, aids to navigation, search and rescue, um, living maritime resources, defense, immigrate, immigrant interdiction, marine protection, ice patrols, and law enforcement. I personally uh, served 29 years directly out of high school in 1990, um, starting off working Morris Code in Kodiak, Alaska, and finishing in Boston, Massachusetts with cybersecurity interdiction on computers. My one Coast Guard member who I highly honored was Cynthia Ortiz, who recently passed. And uh, she was one of my supervisors who taught me um, how to navigate through the Coast Guard and was always there as a big supporter of mine. Thank you again for coming out on this Memorial Day and remembering those that have passed. Dennis Russell, Commander of the uh, VFW, and just a couple of comments. First, the uh, thank yous to go out to a number of people. I'd like to begin with our Director of Veteran Services in Plymouth, Roxanne Whitbeck. It is no easy task, I will tell you, to put something like this together and to get all the, all the groups uh, together to honor those who have gone before us, especially on this day. Uh, Roxanne Whitbeck, thank you very much. Please let her know our appreciation. Thank you so much. Our elected officials, and Roxanne will mention all of those in a moment, but I do uh, want to uh, thank the Scouts for coming out. You're absolutely terrific. You looked great. Our, our Honor Guard, uh, both the VFW, American Legion, our Canadian friends, and Royal uh, Canadian Legion, thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out on a very special day. Our honored guests, and you heard a bit about each branch of the of the military. We're all brothers and sisters, and we're all uh, pointed in one direction. I would like to just share something with you today. Uh, we lost some of the members during COVID of our honor guard. Uh, one in one name that you heard today was Tony Cassiano. Tony was a dear friend. We shared more than just being veterans. He was the epitome of putting his self in harm's way for others, saving countless of our battle wounded on the battlefield. What is known as a dust off is what he conducted that you heard Tony Jr. speak about, the missions that he flew bringing the wounded, bringing the dead back. So over, six, over 600, actually. Tony's family marched with us today. He was, Tony was a member of our honor guard. And he marched, his family marched with us today in his honor, and I want to thank them for doing that. Tony was looking down upon you, I can tell you that. Thank you. I would just take a moment, someone special, also in my life, in the, in the hills of today that we're remembering all the men and women who have served our great nation, I want to especially remember my dad, who served in the Army in World War II. He was among the brave men who stormed the beaches of Normandy, Omaha Beach to be exact. Interestingly, when I returned home from Vietnam, we never spoke about our combat service. We spoke about being in the service, but when it got down to the battle stories, we kept them to ourselves. And I thought a lot about that. And I figured out that we really 
didn't have to, since we saw firsthand the cost of freedom and what it really means. So thank you, Dad. And to all who have served to defend and protect us and do this every single day, in and out, no matter what happens in this country, I can tell you that you will never be forgotten for your sacrifices and the sacrifices of your families. So I say, God bless you, God bless your families, and may God bless America. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite Phil Ryan up for the closing prayer. Then we're going to um, have taps and do our final volleys. But I would like to thank everybody for coming out today, especially our, our dignitaries, our town officials, and everybody taking time just to, it means a lot to us veterans to, to know that we're supported in the community. And you guys are always so good at doing that. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for coming out today. Okay. All right, you guys. Invite guard. Invite them. Honor Rifle squad. Hard. As we depart one from the other, may God bless us and keep us. In his gracious protection, we commit ourselves. May he be near us to defend us, with us to refresh us, around us to preserve us, before us to guide us, behind us to justify us, and above all, above us to bless us and keep us from all evil. Amen. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. And in closing, thank you all for coming out. And just remember, freedom is not free. And as you enjoy um, your day today, thank a veteran. Take care, everybody. And uh, I'd like to invite anybody that uh, wants to go down. The honor guards are going to be going down to the waterfront to lay a wreath for um, our fallen mariners. God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you.